Hi friend, welcome back to my channel. Today we have a mountain of trash to go through. It has been uh, forever in a day since I have filmed a trash chalk video and there was a bunch of stuff that I managed to finish off. Plus I have some like decluttering items in here that are not makeup based. So I will leave timestamps down below and let's get into it because it's gonna be a long one. Okay, scratch that. I said I was going to talk about uh, declutter products, but as I was going through organizing Mountain of Trash, there are a ton. So I'm going to go ahead and do that in its own separate video and just talk about for sake of this video, the actual products that I have emptied. So stay tuned for that declutter chat with you. For now, let's go ahead and get started with actual empties. Okay, I have a bunch of nail items that I have finished off. The first I have is a nail glue. This stuff I swear by, it's the Kiss Brush On Nail Glue. I have a whole video about how I apply press on nails that I will link up here in the cards for you if you wanna go check it out. But I am somebody who uses the both Impress and Dashing Diva nails that come with the adhesive on them in conjunction to this. I am very hard on my nails. I do a lot of hand washing. I'm just someone who naturally picks at their nails real or artificial. So I find that this really helps it here and gets me to that, you know, 10 day mark pretty easily. So love this stuff. It's hard to come by ever since the pandemic in 2020 hit. This stuff is not always easy accessible in stores, but I can get it on Amazon for a pretty good price. I have two sets that I finished up from a collaboration that came out. I think it was last spring, Jess Kant. I don't know who that is, but girlfriend made a lovely collection of nails. And I think I bought nearly all the nails that she came out with in the collaboration. And some of them I got duplicates of. So the first ones that I have um, were called Sunshine Coast. They are these really beautiful matte pale nude with some just like polka dots, but also some daisies. And then they have this soft yellow matte. I really liked these as a pretty, I call it a neutral nail where they have a design, but they weren't really in your face. And I thought they were really lovely coming into the spring season. The same can be said about these other ones that were called 12 18 I guess and these were just a really lovely like it reminds me of what you get when you get your acrylics put on the pink and white but just the white I actually got quite a few compliments when I wore these I feel like these both of these they could easily have out all the time especially these and people would probably buy them like hotcakes so they're just a really lovely neutral nail especially for somebody who's not big into designs or bright colors which is a lot of what impress puts out out. I'm into that but I don't feel like the average nail that they put out is like this and I thought it was very like classic and unique in a really beautiful way so I really liked both of these and was happy to be able to wear two sets out of the 30. Then from the Impress Color Collection I used up another one of the Tri Gray Nails. Ooh, I love these purpley gray nails. I was so pleased when they came out with the color collection. The idea that you don't always have to have like an accent nail I think really speaks speaks to people, I think really speaks to a big market in the nail. I think really speaks to a lot of people and I think also broadens who might want to wear their nails. So I'm really happy with these. I wore these, I think this is my second box of these. So I've worn them collectively four times and love, love the color. I've got another one that I have probably owned like, I don't know, five or six boxes of. These are in what they call Lucky. They're these really lovely soft pink nails. You've got like a glitter nail here, just the basic pink here, and then you have this flower accent. This is actually the set of nails that I wore uh, when Baby Girl was born, which is like a, I don't know, a weird thing to maybe remember or have like nostalgia attachment to, but I'm gonna always remember these nails for that reason. I had worn them plenty of times before then, but they hold an even more special place in my heart now, and I'm sure I will have another box of these in the future. Additionally, I have these ones called Crossing Lines. They are what are currently on my fingers. I have basically like a glitter nail and then you got two accent nails and then like a pink. Again, I've been kind of feeling the 
what I consider a neutral-esque pink type of nail. These were lovely. I like how the glitter nail in particular wore with these. Sometimes the glitter nails can be a little bit thicker than the other nails and not as well um, like shaped to be able to fit onto your finger so they pop off a little bit easier. That's not the case with this set, so I definitely would buy these again if I came across them. Finally, from Impress, before we talk about the two that I have from Dashing Diva, I have some not-so-great seasonal nails. They came out with, very happy to see, St. Patrick's day nails. I really love to see all holidays represented, not just Halloween and Christmas. And these were called St. Patty, very fitting. They had these really cute shamrock jewels on here with like a matte mint and then this fun glitter. Here's why I did not like these. And I'm actually ditching this box having only worn one set, which is quite unusual for me. These little shamrocks did not last. I had these on one day and I think by the end of that first day, most of the jewels had come off, which was just malarkey. I've never had that happen before. I will say that I feel the Dashing Diva has a better adherent for any kind of jewel that they put on their nails than Impress because usually over the course of my time with Impress nails, the, those jewels will come off. It's not a huge deal to me, especially because a lot of times on the accent nail, if it pops off, it's not that noticeable, but it really peeved me with these because it happened so quickly after putting them on. And that's kind of what makes these St. Patrick's Day nails. So would not recommend these, did not go buy a backup box, was not pleased. The two that I have from Dashing Diva are also holiday. I also picked up from them. They came out with the St. Patrick's Day collection, real happy with it. And they had basically three nails. You had gold glitter, green glitter. Um, you had this green with the shamrock belt. And then you actually had four because the other nail was <laughs> A legitimate leprechaun, which I thought was great. The problem I'm noticing though with Dashing Diva, I don't know if it's because I'm still taking prenatal, but my nails are still relatively long and strong. So I'm finding that the short is almost a little bit too short for me to the point where I can't find a second set of nails. And with these, the leprechaun only came on literally two of the nails. So I wouldn't be able to pull off a second set. So I'm picking these after one but I did enjoy the design it was very fun for St. Patrick's Day and the other holiday that they came out with a collection with for this year again so I don't know if this was last year or this year but these are Easter nails and I thought these were absolutely precious I love 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 the bunny design on here with the white and the pink like very thoughtfully done I did get two sets out of these because I actually cut my nails down to be able to wear them loved these happy to see them and I really do like Dashing Diva and Impress. They're the ones you always see me wearing because I like the length of nails. I like the fit. I like how they look relatively natural. Most people, when they compliment my nails, I tell them like, oh, they're just press-on nails and they're shocked to hear it. So happy, happy with these. And I'm glad I worked through a lot of the different boxes that I had because I have a real surplus of nails. Right now it's getting out of control. Let's go ahead and talk body care. So I have used up a sugar scrub. This is from Porch Cookie Soap. It's the Heart of Ocean Foaming Sugar Scrub. I basically was trying to use um, a $10 off a $35 purchase and I had purchased a couple of laundry detergents along with this. This was fine. I feel like I am starting to like these less because I discovered Tree Hut. I feel like nothing really compares to Tree Hut scrubs and I only had four ounces with this so I went through it really really fast. So I don't necessarily think price point for usage is great for me. It isn't one that I feel like I would say don't buy it but it's not as abrasive as I prefer my scrubs to be. I have a couple of bar soaps, both of Porch Cookie Soap. Um, I have this one from the Christmas Advent Box, which is Heat Miser. They did a year without a Santa Claus theme, which is my favorite movie of all time. I think it is an amazing Christmas story. I don't know why I love it so much, but I do. Uh, unfortunately, this bar soap, I did not like the scent of. I don't recall what the notes were, but it was pretty jarring and wasn't what I considered like 
a great scent in general. So happy that I worked through it so fast. Their bar soaps go really quickly because they're glycerin based. And then in their Easter box this year, I actually filmed myself unboxing it and then meant to put it up for Easter and forgot. And so I just abandoned the project altogether, but it was Minions themed. It wasn't as good scent wise for me as their Trolls 2021 Easter box was, but it wasn't too terrible. And they actually did a Steel the Moon bar soap and it looked like an actual moon. The scent of it was just like a general generic kind of scent, but I really liked the theming of it. So happy to have that worked through. And then additionally from that Easter box, I also tossed in the My Pet Unicorn bath bomb into a recent bath that I took. Um, I don't feel like it was the longest lasting bath bomb I have had from Portrait Cookie Soap. It was really cute. It was painted beautifully like the little unicorn from the movie, but the scent wasn't really impactful in my bath. And I don't, like I said, I don't feel like it lasted very long. Like it fizzed out really quickly and then it didn't really have much of an effect in the bathtub. So kind of a womp womp, but it was cute. I have some other non Bath and Body Works lotion products. First is a sample. This is the Sol de Janeiro Bija Flor Elasto Cream. This was the latest scent that came out with Sol de Janeiro and I wanted to get my hands on it to be able to smell it. Um, definitely not my jam. This is a cologne. This is like a mahogany teak wood, not as intense as that scent, but it is a little bit softer, but airs on the cologne side. I did not love it, which I'm not going to be upset about because it means that I'm not going to clamor over this the way I do the other Sol de Janeiro body creams. I do like the texture of these. They are a beautiful, like silky texture. You don't need a lot of the cream to absorb into your skin, which is difficult for me to comprehend because I'm just like a big goblin when it comes to picking up lotion in tubs, but it does have a little go a long way type of effect. And I do like that, but the stuff is just way too expensive for how frequently I would go through it. So wouldn't get this scent, nice textural experience, but I don't think it's worth the big bucks. I also worked through two of the Soul Body, which is ColourPop sister brand, um, body cremes that they have. I have Sparkling, Mimosa, and Vanilla Dream. I picked both of these up when they were doing a pretty significant like clearance sale on their website and they had these as duos they had a corresponding body scrub that came with them and I had never tried them before and I think they were around I want to say the six dollar mark I don't think I would have paid more than six bucks for these I gotta tell you the scents I really did enjoy at first like vanilla dream I thought to myself like on cold it's a vanilla scent like it's very generic no I actually really liked it on my body. There was a little bit something more to it than just vanilla. I did enjoy it. And I also actually really liked the sparkling mimosa. Mm. This has, I want to say it's like a, a citrus, mm. like a citrus with vanilla type of scent. Really delightful. Here's my like issue with them. You only get, uh, 2.7 ounces. That is not a lot of product. So I certainly would not pay for these at the full retail price they sell them at, even with a duo, like the duo with the scrubs. I don't have any scrubs to show you, but the scrub, I feel like I'm going to go through really fast, especially because I am a true goblin about putting scrubs on my body. I just feel like they are very expensive for price per use. If they were doing a really significant sale again, where I could get these around the $6 mark, making like each one of these three bucks, fine, that's worth it. But aside from that, I wouldn't. I will tell you though, the reason why I do like them so much and be willing to buy them again, they have a very similar type of texture to, dare I say, the Too Cool for School butter that I absolutely love, their body butter. Um, I feel like it's not as thick as that. It's definitely a thinner formula, but it's very silky. It feels really pleasant going on the skin. It absorbs nicely. So if these were a better price point slash like I had more in here that would justify the price that they charge, I probably would buy these more often, but where it stands right now, good clearance item wouldn't buy at full price. Uh, we have our first body care empty from baby girl. Um, I'm going to toss these in from time to time. Basically the ones that I have right now are ones that I was given from the shower. Um, I am so fortunate. We had a really aggressive 
maybe shower. A lot of people came, a lot of presents were given and we were given a lot of body care stuff. So I'm just trying out what we have. And then when that stuff is used up, I will make my choice about what I want to purchase for her. So the first thing I used up was the Burt's Bees Baby Nourishing Lotion with Sunflower Seed Oil Original. This I don't think has a scent and like it should, <laughs> like it doesn't, I don't know what that is. It's just the smell of the ingredients isn't overly pleasant. And like, listen, I know we're not supposed to overly scent baby products because they have really sensitive skin, but like a little something would have made this, I think, more pleasant to use for me and her. But it did make her skin nice and soft, which is not a bad thing. I apply lotion to her twice a day in the morning and at night. It's a part of like our morning routine and our nighttime routine helps her kind of understand day and night and all of that jazz. So it was fine, but I don't don't think there's going to be one that I purchase when I'm done working with the items that we have. Whew, let's do a short category. I have just two hair items. I have the Body Shop Ginger Scalp Care Shampoo. It felt like this took me a thousand years to use up this winter. Like I think I pulled it out in September and really didn't finish it until about like end of March. Lasted me forever. It is effective for dry flaky scalp. Um, I had a bunch of these at one point and now I don't have any in the collection. I don't know if I would buy it again. Check back with me when winter comes back around and see if I feel like I need it. And then I also worked through my L'Oreal LV Extraordinary Clay Rebalancing Shampoo. This also took a long time to use up. That's mostly because I stopped using it and brought in the Body Shop one to work through that because my scalp was feeling a little bit dry. I do really like this line and would like to use it exclusively. I sometimes stray from it because it is hard to find at my local CVS, but if I prefer to have the choice, I would pick this stuff. I think it's great for my hair. We are now gonna talk about skincare that I have finished off. First is a face wash. This is the Rooted Beauty Sensitive Facial Cleanser with Aloe and Chamomile R7. It says powered by seven antioxidant rich roots. This I got for free. It is fine. It is very much a basic cleanser. I think if you are somebody who doesn't have oily, acne prone skin, this might be nice for you. If you have just like very neutral skin or sensitive skin, this would be delightful. It wasn't necessarily my favorite. I'm glad I didn't pay for it. It's not a bad product, but I wouldn't say it effectively helps keep any acne at bay, which is what I mostly care about. I have my go-to cleansing balm. This is the Clean It Zero Cleansing Balm Original from Vanilla. I did a whole ranking of six different cleansing balms. I'll link it up here on the card so if you wanna go watch it. Um, this is my like absolute favorite. I think it's so delightful. Happy to have worked through another one of it. Um, despite my love of it, I am now working on both recommendations that you guys gave me of cleansing balms to try and um, a trio that I had purchased back during the winter from pharmacy because I've always wanted to try the pharmacy cleansing balm so check back with me in future trash talks to see if anything has pulled this out of its top ranking but I just think this stuff is the best. I have an eye cream that I finished off. This is the Good Molecules uh, Yerba Mate Wake Up Eye Gel. It's in a like I think an aluminum packaging so I had to actually like twirl it to be able to get product to come out of it. This stuff is amazing price point. I think I paid less than $10 for it and it lasted forever. Granted, it does not remove my need to have the Belief True Eye Balm, which is so critical to my eye existence in the winter, dry, dry winter months. But this is nice to use in the other months. Definitely something that I think I will repurchase once I work through the other types of eye creams that I've tried to replace the Belief True Eye with and have yet to be able to. But this is really great. I'm thinking if you're somebody who has moderately dry under eyes, you're going to want this because it's so good. It lasts forever and it absorbs really quickly. I think it checks off a lot of boxes. I just wish it was a bit more moisturizing in the height of winter for my dry Sahara under eyes. Uh, I have a sample. This is the Innisfree Intensive Hydrating Serum with Green Tea Seed. This I was pleasantly surprised by. I think I might be willing to purchase it depending on um, what the actual price point is and the packaging. I will say I don't love this type of like pour it into your hand packaging. So if the full size is like that, it's definitely out. But if it's not, it might have a chance. 
I just felt that it actually was quite hydrating without being too rich and causing me to break out. I feel like this could be really good for me in the winter months. So definitely surprised by it and it's on my radar. To wrap up skincare category, I have a moisturizer. This is the Paula's Choice Water Infusing Electrolyte Moisturizer. So I was really clamoring to find both pregnancy and nursing safe skincare. I've talked about this in previous videos. I actually had a request to do a whole like video on that topic. I, I don't feel I am very qualified for it, but in my research and on the Paula's Choice website, they said that this was something that you could use. So I trusted that. I don't have a dermatologist, so I, I don't talk to anyone about it. I just made the choice on my own. My complaint with this is I feel like I went through it really fast. There's only 1.7 fluid ounces in here, and this stuff is not inexpensive. I'm definitely willing to pay around the $30 mark for a moisturizer, but I want it to last a lot longer than this did. Even though it said it was a PM moisturizer, I used it in the AM. I know some Paula Choices website that they labeled most things as PM if they didn't have SPF in it. And I'm somebody who can just apply SPF on my own. I don't feel like I have to have it at my morning moisturizer. And I really feel like this wouldn't have been thick enough or moisturizing enough at night. And I'm, I'm not a dry skin kind of person. So it was decent, but not something I'm going to repurchase at this point in time because I just went through it too fast for what it costs. Whew, okay, let's round this all off with makeup empties that I have. First is a boring one. It's the e.l.f. Daily Brush Cleaner. Love this stuff. I do spray my brushes every single day. I like it for two reasons. It helps me remove the color off of any of the brushes I use. I do think it has helped extend the life of my brushes, which is always delightful. So I will keep buying this stuff. It's definitely great. The only con is I feel like the jumbo size no longer exists, which is heartbreaking. So I'm gonna keep buying the small guy, but I prefer the big one. I think it lasts a lot longer. I have four mascaras that I have finished off. The first is Old Faithful Primer. It's the Violet One Lash Primer from Milani. This stuff is the bomb.com. It is a really great primer. I feel like the brush has really great product on it. I can really get it into my lashes. The one thing I'll say though, as you can kind of see, is the stopper is a little like iffy in its ability to really clean the brush off, but uh, I like this stuff a lot. It's my go-to at the drugstore. It is totally worth the price point. I have tried other primers and nothing as good as this one. Then I have one from Honest Beauty. Uh, I came across, I randomly went to a Walgreens and they had a bunch of Honest Beauty super discount. I think this was like $2. So I wanted to go ahead and pick it up. It has a mascara and lash primer two in one. So I was very intrigued. Um, the primer, hot pile of garbage. The brush like doesn't pick up enough despite what it looks like. And when you apply it to your lashes, it does nothing, absolutely nothing. So the primer was no good. Then when it comes to the mascara, I actually liked the mascara. It's one of those um, initially wet formulas, but as it dries out, Ooh, it does good stuff. I will say though, I will not buy it again because I'm not going to purchase a product where half of it I don't like because inevitably you are paying for that half and I'm not gonna subscribe to buying something where I'm only gonna use half of the product or finding only half of it to be decent. I also think it retails normally for upwards of $15, which is a little bit pricey for me for mascara when there are so many really good drugstore ones. So it was fine for $2, but wouldn't go back for it again. Then I have the e.l.f. Lash It Loud Volumizing Mascara. This is in Deep Brown. This one I thought was just okay. Um, there's a lot There's a lot of hype about this mascara, and when it came out in brown, I was really into the idea of it. This is what the wand looks like. It is a wand that I should like because it reminds me very much of the TARDIS lash paint that they have, and I don't know. I just didn't feel like it really packed a punch and I don't have really finicky lashes. My main goals that I'm looking for is to have like thick lashes and to kind of give a little bit of volume to them, but I don't curl them. I have relatively easy going lashes. I'm just looking for a little bit more thickness so that you can very noticeably see them because I don't wear false lashes. And I don't feel like this really checked off all those boxes, so I wouldn't get again. I do have it in black, which I'm trying to use up, but nothing super great. And then I have from Sephora, the big, 
by definition, a volumizing and lash multiplying effect mascara in ultra black. This I thought was fine, like nothing amazing. The wand is like just a generic wand. Um, I didn't necessarily dislike it, but I wasn't convinced that I wanted to buy a full size of it. I have two samples, both from Joa. They're the pore deactivator infused with tea tree extract. It's pore minimizing and mattifying primer. Um, this stuff is fine. I have a full size of it and I don't remember why I do because I don't think it's that amazing. I've had tons of samples of this because ever since um, Kiss, Joa, and Impress merged on one site under their like umbrella company, you get Joa samples every time you place an Impress order. Um, it's basically a silicone primer. Doesn't necessarily wow me but I have a full size so I will eventually use that. I have an eyeliner. This is the NYX That's the Point Hella Fine Liner. This liner is lovely. It is super tiny which I actually really like because it makes it so easy to apply. It makes it pretty foolproof in my opinion. You do get a pretty thin line when you do it which is good for me but also bad because I'm someone who is very messy with applying mascara and oftentimes I would find if I would do a, as thin of a line as I could pull off with this inevitably when I'd apply mascara I would have it above that band which was quite annoying but it is what it is. I will rebuy this stuff happily. I think I've gone through, I don't know, five or six of these at least. It does last a really long time. And for a while I was couponing these for like next to nothing at CVS. So do recommend this one. I've also finished off a lip balm. This is the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask in Mint Choco. This um, I got in a holiday trio, not in 2021, but in 2020, and I've been like slowly working on them. This was fine. The mint in here, it's like a very, very thin, like thin mint type of scent, like a soft thin mint scent. Wasn't necessarily my favorite, but it lasted a long time. I'm now moving on to, uh, I think, the second or third one that came in the little trio. Definitely worth the trio. I got the price of it at TJ Maxx. So I got it for a fraction of the cost and it's paid out really well. This is a really delightful uh, an evening lip balm for me. I apply it before I go to bed. It does not bother me that I put my finger in this, but it does bother some people. I will tell you if that's the case and you want to use this, you can just buy their tube version because the tube version is exactly the same as what they have in the pots. And our very last item is perfume. This is the pear ink scent from Juliet Has a Gun. Uh, I am hard pressed to find a Juliet has a gun scent that I don't like, but I am just not in the market to buy perfumes. I like the very small collection that I have and I am nowhere near finishing off any of them. So I cannot add any to my collection, but this one was a delightful sample to have. So there you have it. Aren't we glad now that we're at the end here that I did not talk with you about the declutter items that I have because this would have been a bananas, bananas, bananas video. I so appreciate you being here. And again, stay tuned because I will film a declutter of all the items that I had put into my trash bin. And I will talk to you in my next video real soon. Bye.